All right, thanks, guys. We're going to start off with Kent State taking on UC Irvine. And that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in that game. Kent State is minus 2.5. Totals at 137 and a hook. Now, we did see a good old-fashioned flip of the line in this one. As Kent State opened as the one-point dog, we also saw movement upward on the total. So, once again, Kent State opened plus 1, up to minus 2.5. Total open 136, up to 137 and a hook. 64% of the consensus are leaning toward Kent State. 56% shaded toward the over. Right now, UC Irvine, I believe they're the ant eaters. They are plus $1.20 on the money line. Now, UC Irvine's just three and four straight up in their last seven. They're also just four and five against the spread overall for the year. Kent State on the other side, winners in their last three straight. Eight and one straight up overall for the year. They're averaging 80 points per contest. They're also shooting 74% from the stripe. Now, defensively, they're giving up just 64 per, uh, points per contest. They also rank the top 25 in defensive field goal percentage, and they are a perfect 4-0 straight up when favored. Antonio Williams is averaging 14 points a game, 4 assists. He's shooting 50% from the field. And Danny Pippen, 14 points a game, 7 rebounds for the Golden Flash. Now, 5 out of Kent State's last 6 did stay under the number. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take Kent State minus 2 in the under 137.5 in that game. All right, next game. Uh, actually on our board, on the big screen in the back, it is going to be Marshall taking on Moorhead State. 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in that game. Moorhead State, they are the two-point favorite in this one. Totals at 147.5. We saw a half a point fade of Moorhead and movement upward on the total. Moorhead State open 2.5, down to minus 2. Total open 144.5, up to 147 and a hook. 59% are leaning toward Marshall, 53% shaded toward the over. And right now, the thundering herd of Marshall are plus $1.10 on the money line. Now, the herd have successfully covered the number in three out of their last four. They're also a perfect 3-0 against the spread when traveling this year. They're averaging 73 points per contest. Meanwhile, defensively, their opponents are shooting just 39% from the field. Now, Gerard uh, West is scoring 15 points a game, three steals, for the Thundering Herd, Tavion Kinsey, 14 points a game, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. He's also shooting 50% from the field for Marshall. And last but certainly not least, Iran Bennett, 5 rebounds a game. He's also shooting 53% from the field for Marshall. Now, Moorhead on the other side, kind of struggling as of late. Losers in 5 out of their last 6. They've also failed to cover the point spread in their last 4 straight. They're averaging just 68 points per contest. They're also shooting just 28% from downtown. Three out of Moorhead's last four did stay under the total. Uh, meanwhile, uh, they are also 8-1 to the under in their last nine as well. I'm going to lean toward the road dog in this one. Give me Marshall plus two in the under 147.5 in that game. All right, next matchup. It is going to be Northern Illinois taking on Pittsburgh. And that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in that matchup. The Panthers are the 11.5 point favorite total at 125. We saw movement toward Pitt and movement upward on the total. The Panthers open as the 11 point favorite up to minus 11.5. Total open 120 up to 125. 66% are leaning pit. 67% shaded toward the over. And right now, Northern Illinois, plus 600 on the money line. Now, NIU failed to cover in three out of their last five. They're also just three and six against the spread overall for the year. Northern Illinois is averaging just 68 points per contest. They lost to UC Davis and St. Mary's this year. Meanwhile, Pitt on the other side, they rank in the top 25 in points allowed. Their opponents are shooting just 39% from the field. Uh, They're giving up just 59 points per contest. They also successfully covered the point spread in four out of their last five. Pitts 5-1 straight up in their last six. Xavier Johnson, 12 points a game, four rebounds, five assists. Trey McGowan's 11 points a game, four rebounds, two steals. And Ryan Murphy, 11 points per contest, three rebounds. He's also shooting 79% from the stripe. This Pitt defense is allowing just 59 points per contest at home. Now, total-wise, Pitt is 60% to the under overall for the year. No surprises there. Northern Illinois, 3-0 to the under in their last three themselves. I'm going to purchase the half a point, buy it down, and take the Pitt Panthers minus 11 
and the under 125 in that game. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to the show. Got some lines of personal leans out for Monday's uh, college basketball action. But before we dive into some more of that, I just want to quickly remind you to check me out on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page. We went 5-3 and three in our premium picks on that website yesterday. We're also hitting at 64% in our last 11 uh, daily double package plays on that site as well. We do daily premium picks on that site beginning at just $1.99 per month. We have a bunch of different memberships, tiers, and packages that you can subscribe to. And at the end of this program, I'm going to explain the difference between what I do on Patreon and what I do on this YouTube channel. I'll explain to you the difference between the two. Uh, and you can actually check out my current Patreon record for free right now. It's right on the homepage. Link for that site is in the description section below. That's patreon.com slash Brock Page. All right, let's go ahead and get into some more free lines and personal leans right here on YouTube. It all starts Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got Valparaiso taking on Charlotte, 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in the Queen City. The 49ers of Charlotte, they are the four-point favorite total at 138. So a half a point move toward Charlotte and movement upward on the total. The 49ers open three and a half up to minus four. Total open 137 up to 138. 63% are leaning Charlotte. 67% shaded toward the over. Right now, Valpo is plus 155 on the money line. Now, Valparaiso is giving up 74 points per contest. Their opponents are also averaging 49% from the field, 34% from downtown. Valpo's dropped three out of their last five games. Meanwhile, Charlotte on the other side, winners in two out of their last three themselves. That's going to put them at five and two against the spread in their last seven as well. They're three and one against the spread as the home team, and they're allowing just 66 points per contest. Jordan Shepard's averaging 14 points a game, four rebounds, four assists. He's shooting 86% from the stripe. Drew Edwards, 12 points a game, four rebounds, two steals. He's also shooting 85% from the stripe and Jameer Young 11 points per contest five rebounds for him the Charlotte squad is shooting 48 percent from the field now four out of Charlotte's last four games all got over the total meanwhile Valpo six and three to the over for the season I'm going to lean Charlotte minus four and the over 138 in that contest next matchup it is going to be Ed uh, Evansville taking on uh, Jacksonville State, 8.30 Eastern tip-off in that game. Evansville, the Purple Aces, they are the four-point favorite. Total at 138. We saw a one-and-a-half-point move toward Evansville and movement downward on the total. The Aces open two-and-a-half up to minus four. Total open 140 down to 138. 72% are leaning Evansville, 79% shaded toward the under. Right now, Jacksonville State is plus 160 on the money line. Now, Jacksonville is 0-4 straight up in their last four games. They also failed to cover in six out of their last seven. This Jacksonville State team is just 2-7 and seven straight up overall for the year, and they're averaging uh, just 68 points per contest. Now, Evansville on the other side, a nice little five-game winning streak for them. They've also successfully covered the number in three out of their last four. They're averaging 80 points per contest. They're shooting 46% from the field, and they're also shooting 37% from downtown. DeAndre Williams is averaging, uh, averaging 17 points a game, eight rebounds. He's shooting 79% from the stripe. K.J. Riley, 13 points a game, four rebounds. He's shooting 82% from the stripe. And Sam Cunliffe, 20, uh, 11 points per contest, three rebounds. He's shooting 33% from downtown. This Evansville, uh, Evansville squad, uh, their opponents are shooting just 40% from the field. Uh, that's, of course, when Evansville is traveling. And they're also shooting just 25% from downtown when Evansville is on the road as well. Now, two out of Evansville's last four games did stay under the total. They're also 3-0 to the under on the road. Jacksonville State 7-1 to the under overall for the year. Give me the purple aces of Evansville, minus four, and the under, 138 in that game. Next matchup, Eastern Illinois taking on Western Illinois, and that's going to be an 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off in that game. Uh, the Panthers of Eastern Illinois are the one-and-a-half point favorite, total at 153. Now we saw a half a point move toward the Panthers and movement downward 
on the total. So once again, EIU, the Panthers, uh, opened minus one, up to minus one and a half. Total open 155, down to 153. 66% are leaning Eastern Illinois, 64% shaded toward the under. And right now, the Leathernecks of Western Illinois are plus $1.10 on the money line. Now, WIU is just 2-6 and six straight up overall for the year, 1-3 and three straight up at home. They're allowing 80 points for a contest. Their opponents are shooting 47% from the field. They're also allowing 81 points per contest at home, and their opponents are shooting 41% from downtown on their home court. Now, Eastern Illinois on the other side, 3-1 and one straight up in their last four. They're averaging 78 points per contest. George Dixon averaging 14 points a game, 10 rebounds. He's shooting 60% from the field and 40% from downtown. Max Smith, 14 points a game, 90% from the stripe. He's also shooting 41% from beyond the arc. And Dang Dang, 10 points a game, 3 assists, 2 steals. This EIU offense is shooting 36 percent collectively from downtown this year meanwhile they're giving up just 64 points per game and their opponents are shooting just 38 percent from the field now four out of eiu's last four games did get over the total they are six and three to the over for the season meanwhile uh wiu is three and zero oh to the over at home i'm going to lean toward the road favorite in this one give me eastern illinois the panthers minus one and a half in the over 153 in that contest Next matchup, Montana State taking on North Dakota State. 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off in that game. The Bison are the 7.5-point favorite at home. Total at 133. So a half a point fade of North Dakota State and movement upward on the total. The Bison open as the 8-point favorite, down to minus 7.5. Total open 130, up to 133. 61% are leaning NDSU. 64% shaded toward the over. And right now, Montana State is plus 285 on the money line. Now, Montana State, 6-3 and three straight up on the year, 5-2 and two against the spread in their last seven. They're shooting 47% from the field and 37% from downtown. North Dakota State on the other side is averaging just 68 points per contest, and they're shooting just 48, I'm sorry, they're shooting just 40% from the field. Now, six out of North Dakota State's last seven did stay under the number. They're also 80% to the under overall for the year. Montana State, 5-2 and two to the under for the season themselves. I'm going to purchase the half a point, buy it up, and take Montana State plus 8 and the under 133 in that game. And, of course, I'm going to slide my next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Loyola Marymount taking on UC Davis, 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off in that game. Davis is the 1.5 point favorite, total at 129. So a half a point move toward UC Davis and movement downward on the total. Davis open as the one-point favorite, up to minus one and a half. Total open 130, down to 129. Uh, right now, 51% of the consensus are leaning toward Davis, 60% shaded toward the under. And right now, Marymount is plus 105 on the money line. Now, Marymount has won three out of their last four games. They successfully covered the number in three out of those four as well. They're shooting 52% from the field. That's good for top 10 in the country. They're also shooting 38% from downtown. Uh, they rank the top 30 in defensive rebounding as well and top 20 in road offensive field goal percentage. So this Loyola team uh, ranking pretty good in several different categories in the country. Now UC Davis on the other side, 7 of 4 to the over thus far in the year. I'm going to purchase the half a point, buy it up, and take Loyola Marymount plus 2 in the over 129 in that game. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into our quick pick recap. Once again, brought to you by patreon.com slash Brock Page, where we went five and three in our premium picks on that website yesterday. Like Loyola Marymount plus two over 129, Montana State plus eight under 133, Eastern Illinois minus one and a half over 153, Evansville minus four under 138, Charlotte minus four over 138, Pittsburgh minus 11 under 125, Marshall plus two under 147 and a half. And last but certainly not least, I like Kent State minus two and the under 137 and a half in that game. All right, let's go ahead and dive into some shout outs. Once again, brought to you by patreon.com slash Brock Page. Shout out to Justin DeLeon, Irie Soul, Retta Mencil one, Dirk Diggler, Joe Delator, Ninji Chris, Chibaku Tensei, Irek, Martinez Tiscus, 
Mark Hall, Lane Eternal Master, San Fran Mission, Bucket Bro, Kiwi Inzi, uh, Dave Marino, Quentin Sp uh, Overton Span, PMC05, Chris Prophet, shout out to Leo, and last but certainly not least, shout out to Nick Soto. All right, guys. That's going to do it for me. Once again, don't forget to check me out on Patreon, where once again, we are hitting at 61% our last 11 daily double package plays on that site. We also went 5-3 and three in our 8 premium picks on that site as well. We do daily premium selections on that site, beginning at just $1.99 per month. There's a bunch of different memberships, tiers, and packages that you can subscribe to. And you're probably thinking, well, what's the difference between what you're doing on YouTube and that Patreon page? Well, I'll tell you this much. What we do here on YouTube is we handicap virtually every game on the board, both side and total. We don't take any free passes. We don't handicap any stay away games. We make an opinion on every single game side and total. Now, if you were to bet your hard-earned money that way on every single game side and total, that is a losing formula. That is not a winning formula for success. You are guaranteed to lose your money in the long run if you bet every single game side and total. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to end up losing in the short run as well. So what we do on Patreon, we narrow it down and focus on three to four premium selections per day. Their personal plays of mine, games that I personally have action on, their high percentage plays as well. And I'll tell you this much, my current record on Patreon is a whole lot better than it is throwing darts, handicapping every single game on the board, picking games with my eyes closed. But uh, anyway, you can check out my current record for free right now. All you have to do is click the link in the description section below. Once again, that is patreon.com slash Brock Page. But most importantly, guys, I do have to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. Happy Monday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you on patreon.com slash Brock Page.